Hymns. Welcome to the first of our series of three videos on the basics of Blaze EZ. This first video will orient you to the Blaze and show you how the basic buttons work and the basic functions. The second video will explore the web-based programming and how to connect to a Wi-Fi network. And the final video will focus on OCR, both with and without the OCR stand. So let's get started. We'll start by giving you a basic orientation of the unit, where all the buttons and ports are, etc. Basically a quick tour. At the top on the left and the right are the stereo speakers. In the center is a slightly depressed square ridged button, which is the power on button. You can press and hold it for several seconds to power it on and off. You can press it quickly to just get the time and date announced even when the unit is off. Below the power button and the speakers is a round button, which is the record button. You can press and hold it to start recording or just press it quickly to access previously recorded content. Below the record button is a row of three buttons with braille labels. On the left is a button with the label M, which opens the media player. In the center is a button labeled with an R, which opens the FM radio. On the right, is a button with a label B, which is labeled for the book reader. The book reader will actually play both documents and daisy books. So you can play text files and word files in the book reader as well as daisy content. Below these buttons is the navigation pad. The navigation pad has four arrows and a round select button in the middle. Of course, you use the arrows for navigation and the select button just does what its name implies. It selects the current item. Below the navigation pad is another row of three buttons, two square buttons with a dot-like button in the center. On the left is a square button with no label, which is the cancel button. You can use the cancel button to cancel out of a program or a menu or to cancel an option. Or when you're in a situation where you have to answer a prompt, yes or no, the cancel button will, will actually uh, indicate no. In the center is a dot-like button, which is the Explorer button. The Explorer actually gives you files related to the specific program you're in. For example, if you open the media player and you press the Explorer button, you're going to get all of the media content available on the internal flash disk, as well as any SD card or USB drive connected to the Blaze EZ. So it will automatically scan for content when you insert a disk or on boot up, and when you press the Explorer button, it gives you all of the media-related content. If you are in the book reader, it will give you all book and document-related content. If you're using OCR, it will give you previously scanned files, um, both text and JPG files. On the right is the OCR button, and it is labeled with an O in Braille. When you press the OCR button, you get the OCR menu, which gives you take a picture, options for turning flash on off, and options for reading previously scanned material. If we move around to the left side of the unit, <laughs> you have the SD card slot. And right now there's an SD card in it. I'll remove that and you can see that there's a nice little slot. And I will again reinsert the SD card. And moving down to the bottom edge, we have three ports. We have the headphone jack, we have the micro USB port, and we have the stereo microphone jack. The micro USB port is used to connect the Blaze EZ to a PC, to connect it to the AC adapter, and also to connect the OCR remote. With the stereo microphone jack, you can connect a stereo mic or a line in source. We'll move around to the right side. On the top of the right side is a dial. You can move this dial up and down to adjust the voice volume. Actually, this volume control adjusts several things. It adjusts voice volume, voice pitch, voice speed, audio preamp, audio volume, and audio speed. 
and you control what it controls with the button below that, which is the voice control button. So if you press the voice control button, it will cycle through all of the options available to you wherever you are. For example, you're not going to be able to adjust media rate if you are in the book reader because you're not playing media. So it does depend on where you are on the unit, what your options are going to be. Below the voice control is the key lock switch. You can press it down to lock it and move it up to unlock it. So that is a basic orientation to the unit. These are all of the buttons and ports that you need to know to operate everything. So now let's take a look at how it works. When you first turn on the Blazy Z, you are placed in the home menu. And the home menu contains several items, including web radio, podcasts, library services, also utilities and options, and several other settings. You can move through the items in the home menu using the left and right arrows. I'll arrow to the right. 100% charged using battery. And I get battery status. Blaze Easy version 1.05 free space 10.04 gigabytes. And I get the software version in free space. Guide voice settings. Guide voice settings. Record settings. Record settings. Bluetooth off. Bluetooth. Wireless line on not Wi-Fi. Web radio. Web radio. Podcasts. Podcasts. Library services. Library services. Utilities. Utilities. Options. Options. 6.30 p.m. Monday, October 20th, 2014. And now we're back to the time and date, which is the first item. You can press select on any of these items to open further options. For example, if you want to set the time and date, you can press select on that. If you want to find out more information about your unit, you can press select on the software version and free space, etc. Of course, if you want to open the guide voice settings or the record settings, you can press select on that and you will actually be presented with all of those settings. As I mentioned during the tour, there are several dedicated buttons to certain programs on the unit. This makes things very easy to operate because you can simply open a program with one button. For example, if I press the button labeled with an M, I can open the media player and it will start playing the file that I previously played. Zero one, could it be Magic Berry Man, Low Greatest Hits, Volume 2, Number 1, Rock. Well, that's not a very good song. So I can move through the tracks using the right arrow. There's a little Nora Jones. And I can pause playback using the button labeled M also. So once I open the media player with the M button, I can also then use it as play pause. I can move through various navigation elements with the up and down arrows. Go to 30 seconds. Go to one track. Go to five tracks. Go to 10 tracks. So with the up and down arrows, I can choose how I want to move through my media files, either by five tracks, 10 tracks, and the default is one track. I can also move, as you heard, by 30 seconds and several other time elements. For now, I'll just press cancel. 6.32 p.m., Monday, October 20th, 2014 and I'm placed back at the home menu. In the same way, I can press the letter R to open the FM radio. However, before I do that, I'm going to have to make a bit of a change. You have to connect either headphones or a patch cord to a speaker in order to get radio reception as that cord will serve as the antenna. So I'm going to take a moment and do that now. So I'll plug this in, and now I will press the letter R. 오늘 리뷰 열어준 곡은 쇼핑의 프로뮤드 작품번호 28의 And we have the FM radio. 빗방울 전주곡으로 잘 알려진 음악. Again, I can press the letter R to pause playback or mute the radio. I can use the left and right arrows to move through stations by 0.1 megahertz, and I can use the up and down arrows to move through my presets. 아휴, 아침부터 뭐가 꼬일 것 같아서 너무 슬퍼요. 95.8 megahertz. 95.9 megahertz. And as I'm moving through them, it's, it's announcing the frequencies, although it is very soft. So it is telling me what frequency I'm currently on, and I'm just moving with my right arrow. And I can press select. And it just added that channel to my presets. I'll go back. 
And again, I'll press select. And now this one's added to my preset. Now I'll press the up arrow. And now I'm moving between them. So that is the FM radio. In the same way, I can press the button with a label B to open the book reader. Thus open. I'm also fairly certain my prowler is long gone, and I told Marina that. I explained that the person I saw ran off in the direction of the Academy of Arts and Sciences, which is a heavily wooded property and just north of that, across Beacon Street and railroad tracks, is Somerville. Then the juristic. And I let it play like that, although you probably didn't understand a word, because I wanted to show you something. The book reader actually remembers the speed and the volume at which you previously played the audio. So this is rather soft and it's playing very fast because I recently played this audiobook very quickly. It's actually a book from NLS, which is one of the protected libraries in the US. So it's a human narrated book and it's playing very fast and it remembered my previous position. So all I did was press the button with the label B, and it opened the previous book I played and remembered all of those things about it. So it's a very, very quick way to continue exactly where you were before. Since we're here, let me press the Explore button. Explore open. Dust. But 8 of 54. And now I have a list of the Daisy books and the documents available on my Blazy Z. Since I'm in the book reader, it gave me that specific content. So if I arrow down, Essential Korean 9 of 54. Little Night 10 of 54. It's going through my Daisy books. In the list, you see Daisy books, and then you will see folders with documents in them. I'll go down. The End of Innocence, 19 of 54. The Fault in Our Stars, 20 of 54. I have a lot of books. Okay, we're gonna go. The Outsiders, 26 of 54. Keep going. The Trembling Hills, 29 of... The Stone Bowl, three <laughs> Top Secret, 20... Written, written in my own heart's blood, 35 of 54. Two OCRs, 36 of 54. SV card, 37 of 54. And now I'm finally down to a documents folder, which is what I was looking for. Actually, everything in the root of the SD card is shown in a folder called SD card. So if I want to open that, I can press the right arrow. Access at 0914. HTM1 of 12. Books and Quick Start Guide. PDF 2 of 12. So now I have a list of the documents in that folder. So if I want to play a Daisy book or a specific document, all I need to do then is press select on it. I can press the left arrow to return to the main list. SB card 37 of 54. And again, I can use the up and down arrows to navigate. Right now, I'm going to press cancel. Cancel. Dust. And now it returned to playback, and I'm going to press cancel one more time. 6.42 p.m., Monday, October 20th, 2014. And I'm returned to the home menu. I actually would not have had to press cancel that last time to return to the home menu. If I'm playing a book and I want to play media or OCR or the FM radio, I can actually simply just press one of these labeled buttons. So I don't actually have to cancel out of the program I'm in, I can immediately switch. The less labeled button here is the OCR button. And as I explained previously, we're going to go over that in more detail in the third video. However, I will press it now just to show you a little bit about what's here. Take a picture. The first item here is take a picture, which of course is most convenient because that's generally what you're going to want to do with this program. I'll arrow down. Flash on. And we have an option to turn flash on and off, which of course you'll want to do depending on your lighting conditions. Result. We have result, which actually gives you the result files from your OCR scans. Open captured file. You can open a captured file, which basically means you can open a previously captured image and scan it again or do the recognition again. Open an external file. And you can open an external file, or rather a JPG that is somewhere else on your unit that you didn't actually capture using the Blaze EZ. So the last thing I want to show you in this video is a little bit about how to adjust volume and other settings like it. As I explained previously, you can simply move the dial. Volume 13. Vol volume 10. Vol volume 10. Volume 11. Volume 13. Volume 15. 
that will adjust the volume and it goes to 15 and that little beep sound told you that I was at the highest setting. So now if I press the voice control button, guide voice speed 11. I can adjust the guide voice speed, guide voice pitch 5, the guide voice pitch, guide voice volume 15, and the guide voice volume. Because I am in the main menu, these are the options that I have. Again, as I previously explained, if I was playing media or something else, I would actually be able to adjust media rate, media preamp, and such, and media volume. So, guide voice speed 11, guide voice pitch 5. I'll adjust the voice pitch just for fun. Pitch 3. Pitch one. Pitch three. Pitch seven. Pitch nine. Pitch seven. Pitch six. Pitch five. And five is normal. And in a few seconds, you're going to hear a little beep sound. Right there it is. And that lets you know that the volume control dial has now returned to its default function of changing the main volume. So if you don't press the voice control button, the volume control will control just the main volume as you would expect. When you press the voice control button, it chooses another setting and controls that. And after a few seconds of inactivity, it will then return to the default function, which you know by that little sound. It will also return to its default function of changing the volume if you press any other key on the unit. Okay, that's it for video one. In video two, we'll connect to a Wi-Fi network and explore the web-based programming.